Hi folks, we're in Bolton today, it's raining, we've had a really good time so far, but it's raining. Uh, we had uh, another brother join, there Dennis, uh, he's got his cross, then we've got George, we've got brother Luke preaching and then we've got uh, brother Kieran down there, with the cross. It cost God his only son. Sin, the transgression, because there was a law that he gave to us. And yet, we have transgressed the law. Transgressors. We are, we are transgressors. He written the law on our hearts, but we don't obey it, we don't keep it. We don't obey the law of our conscience, but sin, it costs. Just a guy getting aggressive there. It costs blood. Jesus had to die because there had to be a sacrifice. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Now in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, to offer to God a burnt offering, to, to, like, to atone for their sins, they would take an animal, like a, a bull, but it had to be a male without blemish. Is it, are you getting this? A male without blemish. And so the person that would lay the, it, it, the person would lay its hands on the head of the bull to transfer the sins onto the bull, and then the bull would be slain, it would be killed for the sins of that person. Now that was just a temporary thing, that was temporary, a temporary measure, like a covering of, of that person's sin. So you see how that some, there had to be shedding of blood because sin is just so awful. It's so awful, we, we, we weren't made to, to live lives of sin. Sin leads to death. So as you see this ball, it was slain to, to atone, to cover the, that person's sins. And that was a picture of Jesus Christ. He, he was a man without blemish. God, the Son, the perfect, spotless Lamb of God who came down. He came down to be that sacrifice, to atone for all our sins, to cover all our sins. And it wasn't a temporary thing, because people in the Old Testament, they had to keep offering these sacrifices. There was no end to these sacrifices, because the blood of bulls and of goats could never take away sins. But now the blood of Christ, Jesus came, his blood, he, he took, he, he, he is the one who can take away your sins, he purges our sins. That the, the sacrifices of bulls were a picture of the sacrifice of Jesus. That is the only way you can be right with God, that is the only hey, way you okay? can come back to God. <laughs> God bless you. It's Have you got a message for the, the British blood public? Of Jesus Christ. What's the message? Not love? through your own works. Not through religion. Okay. Not through your God bless prayers, you. Not through your charity giving. Not through going to this church or this religious event. It's you've got to come empty hands. You've got to say nothing in my hands. I bring simply to your cross. I cling. Because we cannot earn God's salvation. That's why Jesus died. If you're trusting in yourself today, you're, you're, you're offending God. You're insulting God. You're insulting the work of Jesus Christ. There is only one God, one God the true and living God and Jesus Christ who he sent 
we have to submit, we have to humble ourselves if we're ever going to be saved. Unless you want to go to hell. Now, I don't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want you to go to hell. That's why he sent his son. But you've got to humble yourself. You've got to humble yourself before God. Because pride, it separates you from God. You'll never, be, you'll never get saved in your pride. You'll never be forgiven in pride. You'll never, you'll never come to know God in pride. You need to repent. You need to acknowledge your sinfulness. You need to acknowledge, I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect. I've offended you, God. I've broken every, every commandment in the Bible. That's what you need to say. You need to get on your knees and rend your heart, not, not your clothes. But you need to come with a broken heart because a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. That's the sacrifice of God. If you want to please God, repent. If you want to please God, be broken before Him and say, I need you. I'm a sinner. I need you. I can't do it on my own. I've been trying for too long. I can't do it on my own. That's how you can please God is repent, turn from your sins, trust in Him, trust in God, trust in the sacrifice of Calvary of Christ, Jesus. He was the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Just think about that. Think about that this, this today. There with his cross. That God uh, there the... is a God, your creator, who created the heavens and the earth. Who created you. Why do you yearn for, for more than this? More than material things? Why do you yearn for more than, than the money that this world has to give you? more than the fame, the wealth. Why do you have a conscience? If we just, if, if we just evolve from monkeys then, why do you have a conscience? There is a God in heaven. He died for you. He came down, He died for you. God, the true and living God, and Jesus Christ who He sent. He sent His Son for you. He sent His Son for you. God so loved, so loved this world. He so loved this world God so loved this world that He gave His only Son. Think about it. We were shapen in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us. All we've ever known is sin. All we ever do is sin. All we ever think is wrong. We think things that we wouldn't even share with our best friends. Our hearts are desperately wicked. Who can know it? There's a poison running through our veins called sin. There's a disease that we have called sin. That we just want to go and do the things that we shouldn't do. We're drawn to sin. We're drawn to the darkness. We don't even want to come to the light. We don't want to hear this message that I'm preaching right now. Darkness. We would rather be in darkness. We would rather have sin than Christ. We would rather do evil than good. And even the good that we do do, we take pride in it and say, you know, we, we puff ourselves up and say, that's me. 
I did that. I'm doing that for me so that I can, you know, earn a place in heaven or earn favour with God. We need to repent. God so loved the world. He so loved me. He so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only son. His only begotten son. His only son. His unique son. The son that he chose. The son that that was perfect. His only son. His unique son. The only one who he called his son. Imagine this. You have a son. It's all you ever loved. How can you, you, you know. His son whom he loved. His only son whom he loved. He gave. He gave for us that whosoever anybody if anybody believes in him in his son won't perish they won't die they won't go to hell but they will have everlasting life he won't just forgive you but he'll, he'll give you everlasting life. He wants to so give you everything. But you need to repent. You need to come on his terms. You need to come through Jesus Christ. Through the sacrifice of Calvary. That's, where, that's, that's the only way you need to come. The only way to God. The only way back to the Father. I was writing some lyrics recently and uh, I was writing about the prodigal son and how in my life I never knew what what love was not not true love I never knew what um, what it felt like to to really know like a home to have a home like to know what what how to feel at home I never really felt like that growing up and I went I went away from I just kind of went away from my family did my own thing you know I know I was never I never knew what what love was and, and I was looking for this love and, and in my father I was looking to him to show me what love was and to show me who God was because because we see God through our fathers, if our fathers, you know, have been bad, have been negative role models to us, we're going to see God that way, we're going to see, he's like that, he's going to be like that, if, if God is a father, then we're going to think that too, if my dad was abusive, abusive to me, failed me, then we're going to think our heavenly father is the same, so that was me anyway, I didn't uh, go after, after God, because of that, you know, I, I would pray and talk to him, but I realized that I was doing so many things wrong that I couldn't, I couldn't be forgiven. But anyway, I would just go on through, through life, through the years, growing up, through my teens, just trying to fit in, trying to find like home in different, among different friends. You know, different, different gangs or whatever, and I never fit, I didn't fit in, but it was until I, I, I came to know that there was a father in heaven who loved me, who sent his son to die for me, and it was on that journey when I was, I, I began to trust, trust again, because I didn't trust I couldn't trust people. People had let me down. A lot of people had let me down and I struggled to trust people. I saw it actually as weakness to trust people. But I began to realize and learn that God can be trusted because he is perfect. He, he, God is love. He, he, I was reading about it and how, he, he, how can God let you down? He is faithful. He is true. 
how can he let you down? So I, I trusted in God, I trusted in the Father, and I'm finding my way back home. I'm, I'm, I'm learning who I am as a son. I'm, I'm, because through him, I'm, I'm, I'm a son. I didn't know I was a son growing up. But through, through God, I know that I am a son. And, and what it is, the lengths that, that the Father in heaven is willing to go for, for his son to come home. That was me. I didn't realize I was a son of, 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 of God. He came. He came for me. He ran. He sent his son for me so that I could come home and know him. So that I could know him. So that's, that's the story, you know. That we are, we are lost. But we are prodigals going away from God. But there is a Father in heaven, you know, who, who is looking. He's looking out for his son. He's looking out. When is my son coming home? When is my daughter coming home? That is the Father. He's looking. He's looking for you. He's waiting for you to come home. That was him. And then it's coming to the end of yourself. I came to the end of myself. I spent my life, I spent, I was spent. Do you feel like that? Do you feel spent in life? Or are you just having fun? Because I got to that point where I was spent. I had enough. I had enough of this life, I had enough of the friends that I was hanging around with, I had enough of what I was doing, I came to the end of myself, and that's when I repented, that's when I could be saved, because I had nothing in the way, so that's what happened, God had brought someone into my life, who told me about Jesus, who told me that Jesus died for, for him and he died for me, someone whose life got changed and who gave hope to me that my life could change too. And so I came home, I repented and I came home and he took my sin and my shame away. I had, I was trapped but he set me free. I was hopeless, but he gave me hope. I thought at 17 years old, that was it. I've spent my life now. I, I don't know what to do anymore. But he gave me new life. It was a new, it was a chance, a second chance in life. He says that I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I was 